Welcome to Creeping It Real. I am Judah. Last night, I did something I don't usually do. I went to the cinema on a weekday. I know, crazy. I went and I saw long legs. I slapped down my 1350. Now let's talk about whether or not it was worth it. Let's get this trailer started, shall we? Uh, when I initially saw this, uh, it was a preview before Quiet Place Day One. I kind of was like, eh, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But then I saw that Nicolas Cage was in it. And I was like, let's give this crazy man a try. He has delivered some good movies in the past. And this one might be as well. From what I read, he was actually one of the producers, so he must have liked what he saw. Now, I'm just going to come out and say it. I think what I have to say is going to fly in the face of most of what you see online. But I could be wrong. According to Rotten Tomatoes, what the professional reviewers say, and I am not a professional reviewer. I am not a critic. I don't know anything about the first second or third act. I just watch a movie and I decide if I like it or not. Now, Rotten Tomatoes, I think at this point, has it from the critics at a 91%. That, according to Rotten Tomatoes, is a don't miss movie. Now, if you look at the audience score, I think it's sitting more around 67%. And I definitely fall closer to that, but definitely lower. This movie to me was filmed quite well. The lighting, the settings, the mood, the symmetry and the balance of the frames was quite unsettling to me, even though I am definitely uh, plagued by OCD and I like symmetry. It, it was beautiful to me but they used it in such a way that it was off-putting and added to the horror so definitely good on you for doing that so i was super drawn in like by like i said by the balance and uh how symmet symmetrical everything was i i just thought it was amazing now the main character i don't know if she was going for playing her character as if she was autistic or had Asperger's or something, but it definitely felt that way. And I didn't know if the director was trying to put everybody in that mindset by making everything symmetrical and balanced uh, to kind of put you in the world of someone who has autism. I, I don't know if that was what he was going for, but he did it well, whatever his reasoning was. There's just very few places where I didn't feel that it worked. Also, when there was flashbacks, they would change the aspect ratio to the time period that the flashback came from. And this is not new to cinema. Directors have been doing this for a long time. I'm just saying that I noticed it and I liked it. The main theme of this movie is there's a serial killer out there and there's an FBI agent. It starts with her getting a debriefing about a serial killer, not, not long legs, a serial killer that's out there. They send her and her partner out to go canvas uh, a certain area and they give the, uh, the description of who they think this person is going to be. It's called profiling. If that's going to help save kids, profile all day long. So they're out there uh, going door to door. She gets out of her car and she gets this sense. She's looking at this house. And this is, for me, the first time that they show the symmetry. They look at this house and it's just aerial, eerie how symmetrical and the angle. I, I loved it. It was so, it was cool to me. So she just gets this feeling and she's like, this is the house. And she tells her partner and he's like, just settle down, settle down. I, let's not get back up just on a hunch that you have. I'll, I'll go check it out. So she stays back. He walks up the door, knocks on the door. You're not seeing 
what's going on. You just see him standing at the door. He's like, hey, you know, we're just here checking. And the dude just gets shot right in the head, right there from the door. This is the beginning of the movie. And she goes running in. She, she gets the guy. So this brings her, you know, to the attention of other people in the agency. And they start putting her through tests. At first, you're not sure what these tests are because they're just showing her images and asking her to say what are the first things that come to mind. But then they start giving her other tests. And you're like, what? It seems like they might be testing her for like uh, clairvoyance or something like that. You know, uh, being able to uh, foresee things or whatever, you know, seeing if she's psychic, psychic powers. That's what it comes across as. So throughout the movie, I'm struggling. I'm like, is she is she playing her character as what she thinks a psychic is like, or is she playing her character as autistic or are they making some kind of correlation to autism gives you superpowers? I don't know. Uh, The actress doing this, I felt that she did a relatively good job playing autistic. There was a few times it didn't quite work, but I think she did a solid job. So she catches this first serial killer. Uh, like I said, they get the attention of higher ups. Then they're like, let's bring her in on this other serial killer, the long legs serial killer. Uh, hoping that her psychic abilities are going to help them in this case. Turns out there's some kind of connection between her and long legs. As a, a child, she had an encounter with this man. The look, the feel, the aesthetics of this movie, I enjoyed. But to me, the ending fell apart. And I don't even think I can stand with the audience score from Rotten Rotten Tomatoes at a 67. I think I'm landing at a 5. 5 out of 10. So here is the big question. Was this movie worth $13.50? In my opinion... Absolutely not. I don't think seeing this movie on the big screen was enough for thirteen fifty. This seems like a Shutter original that uh, you know I would have been much more pleased had I opened up Shutter and saw this there and me watch it without knowing anything, and I probably would have really enjoyed it. However, it being a theatrical release, it, it was a disappointment to me. Now, I mentioned that when I saw that Nicolas Cage was in this movie, I thought, let's give this man a try. I felt he was wasted in this. Uh, I didn't think his performance was particularly fantastic. In fact, it felt like other characters sometimes, which is somewhat weird in the fact that I found this information. When Nicolas Cage first read the script for Long Legs and considered playing the titular serial killer, He knew exactly where he drew his inspiration. He knew exactly where he'd draw his inspiration from. His mother quoted from Nicolas Cage, not that she was satanic, Cage clarified in a recent interview, but said witnessing her struggle with mental illness. Now, mental illness is not something to joke about. Anything, any kind of jokes I may make, I want it to be clear. I do not find mental illness to be funny. I would call OCD mental illness, and that's something I struggle with. (laughs) That when he was talking to the director, Osgood Perkins, it says he was shocked to learn the director had his own mother in mind when writing the script. Some portions of mental illness are treated as if they're not mental illness, and They want to just tell people to lean into that mental illness. And then other mental illnesses are just pushed aside and excused as if they're whatever, just just buck up, just deal with it. And then some mental illness, which really isn't affecting anybody, people like over medicate. It's it's so frustrating to me. And I'm not a doctor. I'm just saying based on my own personal experience, plus me observing others, this, this, is, this is what I see. And I, I wish we could get it under control because it's heartbreaking 
the way that true mental illness destroys us and the way that society reacts to different versions of mental illness. Side note, I found this so interesting. Osgood Perkins is actually the son of Anthony Perkins, who played Norman Bates in the Alfred Hitchcock movie, Psycho. That's kind of a cool little tidbit. Let's talk about Nicolas Cage again. He, you don't recognize him. He's hev- other than through his acting. His face is heavily uh, covered in prosthetics. This is the only, this is the clearest photo I can find of the character Long Legs online. They're, they're probably wanting to keep it like uh, secretive uh, to a certain degree until it's been out a little longer. But this is the best photo I could find. And I got to tell you, when I first got a clear view of him, the only thing I could think of, I know there's somewhere, someone out there has thought the same thing. I want you to contact me, leave a comment. I know I'm not the only person. The only thing I could think of is this character, this anime character from the anime Fairy Tale. As, so, as soon as I saw this, like, look at his chin, his nose, his cheeks. I wish you could see more of it. His hair, his, where he was wearing white most of the time, other than when he was walking around in a bathrobe, he went to go shopping. Okay, now this character doesn't have white hair, but look at that. The, the chin, the nose, all of it. The white. Come on. I know I'm not the only one. Somebody, somebody else out there had to have thought that when they first saw this. There was true supernatural things occurring in this movie. It wasn't just a serial killer uh, horror movie or a slasher type movie. That There was supernatural things in it. Some of it worked. Some of it didn't. It, I kind of focused around these dolls that Longlegs was making. Something to do with these uh, silver balls that he would put. They're like, like life-size dolls. He'd put these silver balls in the in the skulls and i'm assuming that potentially these silver balls held evil spirits this is my interpretation of the movie i I don't know if anybody else would take it that way um and these uh these spirits would uh, affect the families when they were these dolls were in their homes and it would cause them to go crazy and they would end up killing each other acting really weird and out of uh, character and then we would notice in the movie that when these balls would get destroyed, uh, some of the characters would come back to their senses. I don't want to spoil the movie for those of you who still want to see it. And I'm, I'm just giving you my opinions and my thoughts. And if it's a hot take to you, that's fine. Leave a comment. Tell me where I'm wrong, according to you. You know, and that's great. These are just my opinions. I hope if you spend money to see this, that you love it, that you come away thinking that it's an eight, nine or 10 film. But for me, it was a five and I would not spend 1350 or higher to see this movie. I don't even know if I would spend seven bucks to see this movie. Anyway, the ending got a little crazy for me when the mystery becomes solved. There's a situation where the main character, the female FBI agent, she doesn't take the necessary steps to stop things. She like gets frozen in fear and it frustrated me. There's somebody who's being murdered. She, this person is not murdered. They're completely safe at this point, but she knows the murder is about to happen. But instead of stopping it, she just freaking stands her and pees her pants. She doesn't literally pee her pants, but she's just standing there all like, (laughs) okay. So she waits for this person to get murdered, which she could have stopped. And then the murderer comes for a child, at which case, then she starts to take action. Hello? Long legs get stopped. The accomplice gets stopped. But it was not satisfactory to me. I'm still confused whether or not she was supposed to be autistic or just have some kind of psychic powers. Either way, I prefer the idea of the autism. Uh almost wish they would remove the psychicness of it. Which, speaking of autism, Netflix has a show called Extraordinary Attorney Wu, which is about an autistic attorney. Uh, It's a comedy. I personally really enjoyed that show, and I recommended it to several other people, and they all enjoyed it. Now, I know this is a horror. I don't necessarily recommend uh, comedies, and this could almost be considered a rom-com 
And uh, I think there's like 12 episodes, but I really enjoyed that. It's Korean. So uh, if you're up for reading subtitles and and you enjoy yourself a good rom-com, you might want to check out Extraordinary Attorney Wu. Back to long legs. My final say is don't waste your money. Wait till it comes to streaming. But it was shot so well. And like I said, the symmetry and the balance is beautiful and it lends to the creepiness. I just, the ending didn't work for me. And there were certain aspects that I was just like, what? Why would she make that decision? What? Again, I'm not telling you to skip this movie. I would wait for streaming. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'd love to hear from you. If you have a comment, leave it. Let's talk about why you liked it. Let's talk about what you didn't like about it. And I will see you next time on Creepin' Rail. Thanks a lot.